in this quick video, I want to, to show how the virtual network service endpoints preview works for storage and how to check if, let's say, performance of uh, a backup tool that goes directly to blob storage is not uh, as you expected, how to quickly troubleshoot it just to see what is going on. So as a first step, um, let's say I have a virtual machine, and so it's running Teradata in this case, and I will SSH to that machine Okay, and what I want to do here is, you know, became root, and I want to see how well my download, how fast my download from blob storage performs, right? So what I can do is I can run a download from blob storage directly into null device just using wget command, and what is the expected download? So this is a six gigabyte file that is going to be in the same region. This storage account is in the same region where this virtual machine is, and I'm just saying output it to null device so that isn't, doesn't write to disk, okay? And you can see it's going at a speed of about 120 megabytes per second. This is very good, right? You, you would see something along these lines if it's in the same region and the virtual machine is powerful enough, and there is enough local uh, disk uh, speed or you're writing to memory like in this case, okay? So I will cancel this download. Let's now see what does the download look like if I'm downloading from a region that is not as close to me, but um, is, let's say, in East US, not exactly where my uh, machine is. So I'm just writing the command and I'm going to paste it here. So this is another storage account. It's in a different region. And let, this speed will be a little bit different, right? So this is lower bandwidth because this account is further away from where I am. However, notice it's still 30 megabytes a second. This is something that you want to do right away, right? Let's say using the URL of a, of a large file that is located somewhere close by in the same region ideally and see how the VM to, performs. Can it read storage fast? This is just reading, but it's a good quick first step to double check, okay? Now, how to confirm if there is some strange routing going on, in particular in the complicated setups, right? So with the virtual service um, network service endpoint, we're told that one of the features it provides is optimal routing, right? Optimal routing. Any routes from virtual network that force internet traffic to your on-premises, not force traveling, or, uh, force tunneling, also force Azure traffic. So it may be going through multiple hubs. So one thing you can do on the VM is trace route and then take the storage account and see how many hops do you have to get to that storage account. So I'm going to do TCP um, and let's see what will happen. And it basically will show how many hops it goes through to reach that endpoint. Okay, so in this case, it went through this many hops. We don't see all of them. Sometimes routers are not responding back with information about themselves. And let's see the one that's in the same region and confirm what that looks like. You see it's much less. That's in the same region. But if you had force tunneling, you would see a lot of things here. And then it would tell you, hmm, something is something is happening, right? In this case, it's going almost directly to the storage account. Let's actually just check with a different port and see if it looks still the same. Port 80, the blob storage port. Yep, so it's almost identical okay now let's see if we set up um service endpoint so also if you have an express route if you search on this express route faq it says that if you advertise default routes we force the traffic back on prem uh, if you enable service endpoint the traffic is not forced to your on-prem and remains within the network. So it could be a way to optimize in case where you default route everything back. So how do you enable this thing? So you would go to your virtual network. In this case, I went to my virtual network and I will add a service endpoint. But before I do it, let, let's just go quickly to a virtual machine. Let's say I'm on this virtual machine right now, database VM0. So very important to know how to check what the effective routes are in effect right now from outside of the VM. So if you click on the Agnes problems and then you click on cannot connect to VM that will appear right here right now. 
right over here, you can see the effective routes link. So let's click on this link. And what it will do is it will pull up the effective routes for this VM for each network interface. So let, this is the primary network interface. Let's see what the effective routes look like. And we can download them into Excel as well. So we'll do that because this is important to confirm and can, uh, compare. So we picked a virtual machine. This takes a few seconds. So once this is done, you can see all of the effective routes. And it says that you can download them. So let's download them into an Excel spreadsheet as well. But basically, it says anything that goes to this, next stop is the virtual network. Anything that goes out is the internet. All of these are non-routable. And then everything else in IPv6 is also internet. See, that's, that's all we got, OK? There's no user-defined routes because there is no complexity in my network. Uh, everything is talking directly to, to itself. There is no next hub IP. So it could be curious to see what yours looks like first before turning on the service endpoints. Now let's go back to the network, OK, to the VNet. And we'll turn on the service endpoint, but only on one subnet. We're not going to do any security related aspects, just going to turn on a service endpoint for the VM subnet for storage, okay? And say save. This will take a few seconds, okay? And once this saves, we will do confirmation of, from a few places. We will again try to see how our routing looks like from trace route. We will look at the effective routes and we'll also look at the diagnostic logs of the storage account because it's telling us over here over here in this documentation, it's saying that when you're troubleshooting it right there, right, you can see, first of all, how to troubleshoot with effective routes, service point, endpoints override any UDR routes. Or it explains it right here, and that tells you how to find it. But we will be able to see the effective routes there, and we'll also be able to look at the logs and see what the source IP address of our client VM is. Is it the public IP or is it the private IP? So let's. Let's go back and take a look. So it added it. You can see right now on the subnet. Great. So let's first go to the effective route screen. So I showed you one way before is you click on the VM and you see it. Another way is you click on the NIC that you want to check and you click on effective routing rules right here. And it takes a second to pull up because it's actually just checking what the effective routes in place are right now. And notice how it looks different right here. You see, we are seeing now more special things here, virtual service endpoint. And over here, it's where it's saying to debug it like that, right? So this, among these nine rules are the storage accounts. How can we tell? Well, download it. When we download it and open it, let me show you. We are going to open the Excel. And inside of this, it will actually show us much more information. OK, so these are the different IP ranges that are all forwarded here right before the last row. Let's look at what our storage account IP address is. 52.184.64. Let's see, is it here? It is right there, 52.184, right there, right? So using this route, it will actually now change it so it goes here. Let's see how the VM behaves. You see the trace route now is only one hop, right? It's only one hop. Okay. The previous trace route to a different storage that's in a different region will still continue to be many hops because you can only expose it within the same region. But this one we bypass. So if I had force tunneling in place, I would have optimized it uh, hopefully like that. And let's see what the download speeds look like. Still the same. So the download speeds, we did not change much because those few hops that I had before were all within the same region and they were not introducing almost any negative effects on my, um, on my system, right? But right now that I'm downloading it, the reason I want to download it is we can look at the logs that are in the diagnostic of the storage account and see what IP address it sees when I'm communicating with it, okay? So we're going to do this. I'm going to cancel this download and also put here something fake. Let's put in here, test one, two, three. Mm, test one, two, three, four, just to generate a couple of records, okay? So now I'm going to go back to my storage account 
and show you what I did prior to that. I enabled in a storage account in a storage account important to enable the diagnostics. Okay. And these diagnostics, I also turn on logging for read, writes, and everything else. So what does it do? It actually creates a hidden container called logs in my storage account. You cannot see it from the browser here, I don't think. You cannot see that hidden container. It has a dollar sign in the front. However, I use the tool and open that container right here. And you can see that it has some data, okay? And there is some data sitting right there. So we will copy this file, put it in the temporary folder, and just look at it. So for now, it doesn't yet contain my request, so we need to give it a few more minutes to refresh. So I'll do that. See, it doesn't have my test of getting the of getting the data. Let me just double check that the previous folder also didn't have anything. Right, not yet. Uh, we don't have the data yet here. So let's give it some time because it doesn't refresh those logs immediately. So the download, um, I think this refreshed now. Let's see how this looks. So what do we have? We have the list blobs. We have our test ones. Looking. And notice right on the top line, we have to do the two downloads few minutes apart, same file, and we can confirm that in the beginning it was using public IP address with a port, and then the second time after we enabled the service endpoints, it was using my private IP address. That's the IP address of the node in question right here. That's the same one, the 004. So we can see from these diagnostic logs, we can confirm which IP address it was using. Obviously, don't will not keep these diagnostic logs enabled on the account because it does create uh, extra data right for every request. But this is how we can confirm that the service endpoint is actually use, being used because the storage account sees the private IP address of the node that's talking to it. And that's the same file we tried to download uh, you know, in the beginning and then a few minutes later. So I showed how to do the download test, but now how do we check the upload works and just in general convenient thing to do. So I downloaded this large file, okay, seven or so gigs. What uh, I recommend using is a colleague's tool called Blob Porter, okay? So this is a Blob Porter tool. You can go to Blob Porter. You can quickly download it. Here it describes, let's see what the latest uh, release version is. Okay, so that's the one. So we will just, let's quickly download and see if we can actually run it. So this will download the Blob Porter utility here. No check certificate and quickly. So we downloaded it and then let's uh, unzip it and test it out. So we will be able to quickly see what speed we can get for, um, so that's the blob porter. So if you run it, it will complain that it's missing files, etc. cetera. But um, we have the file right here. We're gonna be uploading this file and I already set the required key and storage account environment variables. So let's just see if this command works. So what this command will say is run the blob order, take this file that I have, in this folder, upload it to the test container and name it that. Okay? And you can see it started the upload right now. It's trying to utilize as much bandwidth as it can of this virtual machine. And once it's done, it will show us the performance. 
very large file. So let's see if it already finished. It did. Seven gigs we just uploaded. And you can see we we're uploading at a speed of 400 megabytes per second from this VM. So I highly recommend to test it in both directions, um, in and out. So let's do a dash two here and see if we can run it as verbose. This is verbose, it just shows way too much information for us to, to, to be interesting. Okay. But once this is finished, you can see it's 800 meg. So um, another final tool that I want to bring to your attention is called the DSTAT. So DSTAT. Let's get it from GitHub. Okay. So this is a DSTAT tool. Let's download this tool. So we'll just download the zip file. Wget. No check certificate. And I'll explain why this tool is convenient. Unzip DSTAT. And then we go into the directory and can run this stat. Okay, so this will be a convenient thing. So let's just quickly open up another tab. Login back into the same server. Become root. Dstat tool. Run it like this and show us network Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1. Ethernet 2, so we can see all of the internet interfaces, the performance, okay? And then here, let's come back to the root folder and just do the upload again without um, verbosity, like this, okay? And now we can watch the speed with which it is uploading. You can see 400, 600 sometimes so definitely going fast right so that's one thing we can do with the blob porter tool is uploading and with the dstat we can watch the performance and you can see how fast it went so with that uh, you can also download from storage with blob porter let's see if we can test that so basically we're just going to say download this in the command above over here i should say blob to file so you can see the download is starting and you can see the speed with which I can download blobs if it's not single threaded. Okay. Uh, so the, with this tool, you, we can test multiple things, uh, uploading and uh, downloading. So this is how you can test everything. And then finally, we just need to remove the service endpoint. And to remove it, you would go back to the virtual network in question. Click on the service endpoints and remove it here. And now, once we look back in history, I'll just cancel this download. Once you look back in the and we're going to try the trace route again. We should be able to see it's again going back multiple multiple routes and we would be able to see the public ip being used here instead of the private ip in the log file okay that's how you debug uh, how the communication to storage is and you need to make sure that your communication to storage is as fast as possible so that backup tools that block backup directly to storage like teradata dsc work properly thank you